Do you guys remember them, them stands that I made? Well, look where we got them now. <laughs> we got them over here on the board mill. So, there was some mistakes made in the prints and lost in translation and the wrong hole was cut because the wrong dimensions were given. So, fingers have been pointing. What do you do? You say, don't worry about it. I got it. Let me fix it up. This is a non-critical hole in this thing. This is only clearance. There is a machined register on the flange that's supposed to just kind of sit down in here. There's no need for it to be cut or machined to fit that close because it's a big unit. This is only used to, uh, to hold it and transport it. So I've got her set up in the board mill and I just found the center and I'm gonna actually bore this thing out, I hope. I don't know how rigid it is, this is my setup using the big boy parallels that I got from Jack. We've got, I got four studs with some big strap clamps holding it down. And it is a real rigid setup with the half inch wall tubing that I used to build it. So I'm about to get it set up and get a board bar set up or something and see how, how it reacts to uh, cutting it. I don't have to take any big cuts on it, but I do need to take about a quarter inch out of that hole right there. So I already found the center. Sweeping in the middle. Moves around a little bit, but like I said, it's not gonna be perfect. I'm gonna cut it oversized anyway, so there'll be plenty of clearance for, um, for it to fit in there and not have to line up. I found the center initially with my 36 inch rule and a pointer in the chuck there. And I was actually within 30 thousandths of being center of that hole. And then I just swept it in and got it real close with the indicator there. Right now I'm just offsetting the chuck. I'm gonna see if it'll, if it'll offset what I need to get out there to that diameter due to cut. So I've already got the board, the boring, hard, uh, boring bar holder in there and I've got another one that'll bolt on here that actually extends it out even further if I need to, but we may have enough travel. You see the arrow over here. There's another arrow right about there that that will go to. That's, that's the travel on the facing chuck. I'm gonna just swing it on out there and see. I'd like to back this up some where the stud, the T-nuts aren't hanging out of the chuck there. All right, Paul's over here showing me how to do it. I think he's finally got me set where I need to go. So let's check it out. There's a nice boring bar holder right there to actually fit around that way. And then that tool will work right there. It'll be a left handed turning tool that I'll use to come in there and bore this thing out. So that'll be the setup right there. I think we got plenty of travel. Got the bottom there. That's cool. I do have a little bit of tilt. It's tilted back a little on the top. I'm not worried about that because we're just cutting a big clearance hole in this. Yeah. working on the stand trying to bore that thing out so I'm running into some problems and and what I'm running into is what I was kind of expecting was going to happen is rigidity problems so there's there's things that you have to do to try to remove the the problems there and one of them is going to be to try to increase the rigidity by attaching other components to it you know an angle plate I'm probably going to have to bolt one of my big angle plates to the table 
and then weld a cross piece to it to try to help support the top end. That's where the chatter is, it's like top half of it. All right, but I wanted to try a different insert. I'm using a, a CNMG 431 right now, my ISCAR inserts, but I wanted to try this. I want to try something that has sort of like that, that vibration free style to it. And this WNMG right here has a is a PP chip breaker. It has a, a really high positive cutting action to it. Really great for shearing a um, a chip over and not creating a bunch of tool pressure like a standard negative break insert does. So I want to try this out. And when I remembered, I don't I don't actually have a left-handed turning tool here at work. And then I remembered I do have one, an extra one, that was given to me by Dennis Nolan over at Seco, the Niagara Cutter. This is the one that Dennis Nolan had given to me last year. Brand new, never been used. There's the package that it come in. So we're going to give this insert a try and see if it will improve and maybe do better than what I've got. And I also was wanting to try another a DNMG insert this is one that that I got from a viewer as well I brought it in grabbed a couple of different style inserts that I got this is another one of the inserts that Dennis had given me it's a TP2500 grade and we're gonna give it a shot too I mean we may we may give that a shot but I'm gonna try this first and see and like I said we may have to do some welding on it to support it and the other thing that I could try, oh, I was going to mention, I've got this engraver here. I have a lot of people ask me about tools. Why do I bring my own tools? It's something that I do sometimes. You know, I have tools, and they do, they do a pretty good job of replacing tools whenever I need them to. But, you know, this is, this is not necessarily being used right now. So, i got a couple here. I put my name on my tools that I bring in and people know that they're mine. I, I tell my bosses, I show up to them, I say, hey, I brought this in, you know, and then when the time comes, they replace them for me. So I'm going to put my name on these tools so that they know that they're mine and all will be right. So what else was I going to show you is uh, if all else fails, you may be able to go to a high speed tool bit with a nice sharp grind on it to reduce tool pressure and that might free up the uh, the chatter and the vibration that we're getting in the in the cut all right it's doing a little bit better but it's still got the chatter problems like i, I was afraid it was going to bottom half is cutting fine the top half of it is getting chatter in it I'm gonna see if it'll go through that cut without breaking anything and then I'll probably end up doing some welding on it and try to stiffen it up. This stud and this clamp to it, still getting plenty of vibration though, so that was my first step to try that. It's helped it, but it's not eliminating it. Still need a lot of support up here on the back side, but it's making a chip. It's just on that top and down. It's like the backlash in the gears is what you're hearing too. I'm gonna keep going with it and seeing if, it, if the tool holds out because we just need to get the hole opened up. What 
I didn't completely remove the chatter from it. It needs a lot more support to completely sustain this, this big piece sticking up in the air, but I did improve it. So we're gonna roll with what we got. Just taking a little at a time, but I don't have much to come out. I think I already told you I gotta take a quarter inch out of it, so make a few passes through there. It'll be out in no time. in a couple tools that I could use to measure that that bore up there so this was my dad's right here I had marked it because I had a couple different sets there at the shop that I had acquired but I wanted to make sure that I knew which one was the original so this is an inside mic stared inside mic that'll go from 2 to 32 inches pretty good set it's nice and compact don't take up a lot of room you have two different styles of mics in here you have uh, this one right here that has the ends that interchange with these bars here. Which this is the one I'm going to use right here. And then you have this style, which a lot of people are familiar with. It takes the smaller rods. I believe, I didn't even look. We've got a Michitoya inside mic here, but I don't think it goes up to uh, 27 inches. So that's why I brought mine in. You know, I'll use this and I'll take it back home, put it in the list of whenever I get through with it today. But I also brought these in just for fun. I might use these also just to kind of just kind of compare. It's not a precision measurement, so we're not really worried about you know hitting a, a direct target. These are the 36 inch veneers that were my dad's. You can see right here, booth machine chop. Alright, so those are our weapons of choice today. So what I want is a 27 to 28 range of, of measurement there. So I'm setting this up to uh, start at 27. So we'll start with this piece right here. So this is the number 124C. And then we're going to use this extension right here. And it's marked on here 26 to 32. And we're also going to use the one inch spacer. So this right here will make it to 27. So we slide that on right here. And then we're gonna slide this up inside there all the way till it seats. And then tighten the, uh, the collet down. And then we're gonna use this extension here. And this screws into the end. And I got my 36 inch scale up here to verify it. It is at 27 inches down there, all right? get that thing where it just touches. You don't want it tight and you don't want to force it out of there. You want to get where it just touches. Rock it back and forth until you get just a little bit of friction on it. But you can still pull it right on out of there. Perfect. I'm right where I want to be. So here's something fun you can do to, to kind of check and see uh, how close your measuring tools are. Now, these have not been calibrated. I don't know if they've ever been calibrated or certified. <clears throat> and neither have my calipers here, these veneers. But, you know, you assume that they're going to be very, very close. Hopefully within one or two thousandths anyway. So, I just did that measurement. And actually what I was getting was uh, right here on the reader. 309. 
309 thousandths, so 27 inches, 309 thousandths. I've got the veneer set to 27 inches, 309 on the veneer scale. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to mic it. So let's go ahead and close it up some. And I don't know if you can see it on video or not. I'm going to hold this in down here with my left hand. And I'm going to work this in with my right hand. All right, getting a little bit of friction right there. I don't know if you can see it on video or not. Looks like we're maybe a half dial under. So, you know, this may be a half dial under, this may be off, this may be off. But what this is doing is it's telling me that I'm very, very close to being where I need to be as far as what I'm wanting to measure and what I'm measuring. I'm, I don't have to worry about this measurement being off quite a bit because I'm trusting my veneer calipers there. Okay. So just something fun that I'm doing right here and I, you know, I try to capture whatever I can on video for you guys. So I'm taking this out to 27 and a half inches. I think I've got one more cut. Well, I know I got one more cut to make. I just want to see where I'm at. All right, that's, that's a good feel right there. So, 373. Actually, I got two more cuts. I'm sorry. I'm taking a 16th at a time, so that gives me two more cuts to take at 373. So, we're 27 and 3 eighths. All right, I just made my my last cut. I want to measure it and see where I ended up at. And again, it's not because I need to hit it within a a certain tolerance. I just I was just shooting for a number, which is 27 and a half. I want to see where I got it. feels pretty good right there it looks like I'm one thou over on the mic good to go all right this one's done I'm gonna dress the uh, corners it's got a sharp burr on the back side there I'm just gonna do all that with hand grinders so it's time to take this one out and I got one more to do. This is the second stand set up, getting, getting everything clamped up just like I was before. I thought I would just show you this. I've already got her indicated in, but this is how I do it. Use the indicator just attached to the face plate here and I'm just sweeping it in and getting it, getting it side to side equalized and up and down equalized. You do get a little bit of indicator sag this way. You just compensate it by about 10 thousandths on um, flame cut bore right here that's not precision it's not too critical but i'll show you i just put it down in low gear use a, a wide radius tip on the end of the indicator and i work side to side and get it within about ten thousandths and then top to bottom same way which i've already done and before before i sweep the center of the hole i actually move the indicator to the outside and side to side i want side to side really close i have that ten thousand stop the bottoms out because it's leaning a little bit but like i said before we're living with that because this is just a big clearance through hole all right all right we got both of the stands finished up this is the second one here got her opened up like it needs to be deburred cleaned up ready to go and then the other ones the other one's right here and it's ready to go as well that was a pretty interesting job pretty interesting project and i hope you guys enjoyed following along watching that one be done it's nice having that kerns boring mill it's a really universal machine that can do a lot of different operations and whenever this come up that was sort of my that was really my first thought was 
you know, instead of taking a torch to it and making it really a mess of the job, take a little bit more time, set it in the board mill and bore it out since we had the capability. That's what we did.